Hi guys, welcome to African Museum. I decided to show myself this time around. Um, okay, so I'll first tell you, I would tell you to like this video, to subscribe and to share it with your friends, but you haven't actually watched the video. So watch it. If you like it, then I'll ask you to like it and subscribe and share it with your friends. Okay, so I want to talk about why I wrote the book Apostle Paul Was a Feminist and why I published it, right? So I published my book Apostle Paul Was a Feminist, Volume 1, in 2021. But the reason I wrote the book starts in 2012, 2013. So around that time, I read an autobiography by an Egyptian lady. Now, I can't remember her name. I can't remember the book, the, the name of the book, but I just know the story, right? Because it's a part of my life now. So basically what happens in the story was it was an autobiography. And this Egyptian lady, she was born into a Muslim family. And from a young age, she like really had a deep desire for God to get to know God and who he was, who he is. And so she went to her dad and her dad was like, you know, really elated, really happy that, you know, my child wants to know about God. You know, she wants to follow down the right path. So the father tells her, tells her, read the Quran, read the Hadiths. So that's what she began to do. She began to read the Quran, she began to read the Hadiths. And as she began to read it, even at, this, at a young age, she began to feel uncomfortable with some of the things that were written about women in the Quran. And um, she would go to her dad and be like, dad, you know, why does it say men can marry four wives, you know, and women can only marry one husband, why? And her dad was like, listen, I married one wife and I'm happy. That was just how it was back then and all. And you know, she'd be like, okay. And then again, she would come across something that she felt devalued woman. And she would go to her dad and the dad couldn't really explain it to her. And she kept reading and kept getting uncomfortable and uncomfortable. And eventually she read something in the Quran and she's like, okay, that's it. She can no longer follow this religion. So she stopped being a Muslim. But in Egypt, it's illegal to change your religion, whether you're Christian or Muslim, right? So, of course, she didn't tell anyone that she had changed her religion. She just, I, I'm sure she also went to the mosque. She did everything. But in her heart, she was not a Muslim. She did not follow the religion anymore. Okay, so she got married. She had three kids. She had two girls and one boy. The, the youngest of her children was a daughter right um and so around after she got married um and the kids were a certain age she uh her and her husband separated and they were basically divorced but not on paper right so eventually she gets a job where um i think in a, a teaching job and in this place there are a lot of coptic christians now coptic christians are the egyptian branch of christianity right they're like the ancient branch of christianity in egypt Right. And so um, one day out of curiosity, she asked one of the Coptic ladies that is there, like, why do you Christians worship three gods? Because, you know, Muslims have thought that because Christians believe in God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, that we worship three gods. Anyway, the Christian lady was like, uh, we don't worship three gods. And the Christian lady was really emphatic, like, no, we don't worship three gods. What are you talking about? And so this lady now is sort of, you know, curious about Christianity. And so she begins to now search up more about Christianity. And eventually it all culminates to her having a vision of Jesus. And um, yeah, she becomes a Christian. Now, I just want to say something, um, which is an aside, but I think it's interesting to, to note, right? So um, when she had the vision of Jesus, right, the Jesus she saw had blonde hair and blue eyes. And she was like, oh my gosh, she was so beautiful. And when I, when I read that part, in my heart, I knew that the reason Jesus appeared to her with blonde hair and blue eyes is because she views blonde hair and blue eyes as the most beautiful features ever, right? Because, you know, in Songs of Solomon, right, um, the bride there, which represents the church, um, speaks to the groom, which represents Jesus, and says, you are the fairest of 10,000s, right? To my, I think it says to my soul, but I'm not sure exactly, but I know it says, you're the fairest of 10,000s. And, and fairest means the most beautiful of 10,000s, right? So if Jesus is the most beautiful, right, when he appears, he's going to appear to you as what you consider the most beautiful, right? So some people, um, how they view Jesus is maybe he's the most handsome with dark hair. So when Jesus appears to them, he's going to have dark hair. But anyway, that's an aside. So anyway, she has this vision of, she has this vision of Jesus and um, she becomes a Christian, right? And it, it comes out, somehow it comes out that she has converted to Christianity. And, you know, like I said, it's illegal. So she was going to go to jail. But she manages to flee to the Netherlands. I think she got like um, asylum there. She fled to the Netherlands and she fled with her youngest daughter. And so anyway, the years went by. Her youngest daughter grew up, got married. All her kids grew up. And sometimes her son would come to the Netherlands to visit her, right? And uh, this son would be like trying to pressure her to come back to Islam. Like, mom, you got to come back. You got to come back to this religion. 
And when he would say this, you know, she would write like in the book bed. No, she would never return to this religion because it devalues women and all. And then right after that, she'd be like, you know, but in Christ, in Jesus, I just feel so valued. I feel so loved as a woman. And me, the reader, I'll be reading this. And I was reading this and I'm looking and thinking, um, does she know that in the New Testament, Paul says, I absolutely forbid a woman to teach a man and that woman should remain silent in church. They shouldn't speak. If they want to know something, they should ask their husbands, you know. And so I'm thinking, does she know about that? Because if she knows about that, I wonder if she's going to feel so valued at all. So anyways, I finished reading the book and I'm not, I'm not settled. I, I feel really uncomfortable. And I feel really uncomfortable because here is this woman, right, who was born to a Muslim family. But because she felt the religion devalued her as a woman, she was willing to give up her religion, right, because of her sense of worth as a woman. And, you know, it's very easy to point at, you know, Islam and other religions and be like, oh, yeah, they look down on women. They put women down and all. But here I am as a Christian with stuff that is written in the New Testament, you know, about how women shouldn't teach, blah, 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 which also devalues women. And I haven't taken any stand. I haven't made a stand. But this lady was willing at that young age, she was willing to take a stand for her sense of worth as a woman. So I feel uncomfortable. And I feel like, you know, I too need to take a stand for my sense of worth as a woman, right? And now, so what I did was this, I went to God, right? And I'm so grateful I went to God. I went to God and I was like, listen, God, okay. I'm not gonna argue with you. I'm not gonna try to find a way around this, but I'm gonna read the New Testament from Matthew to Revelations. And when I get to any verse that I feel puts women down, I'm just gonna ask you, okay, Jesus, what did you mean to say here? Because you know, the Bible is, cons I consider the Bible the word of God and what is said in there is basically what God is saying. So even if Paul wrote it, right? Um, it is God speaking, you know, right? It's Jesus speaking because, you know, the Bible, um, Paul even says that um, all scripture is God breathed, right? So it's actually God speaking to us. So I'm like, okay, God, I want to know what you think. I want to know what you meant by, you know, I absolutely forbid a woman to teach a man and that woman should remain silent in church. I want to know what you meant by that. Okay. And whatever you say, whatever you tell me, I will accept it. But if it is something that puts women down, I'll accept it. But I will not follow you anymore. You know, that's, I don't think I can worship you as God anymore because I need to take a stand for my worth as a woman, right? I believe that as a woman, I am equal to a man. I am not beneath a man. I'm not inferior to a man, right? And so I began to read the New Testament from the beginning to the end. And whenever I would come across a verse that I felt put women down, I would just pause and be like, okay, God, close my eyes, get quiet inside of myself and be like, okay, God, what did you mean to say, right? And God began to speak to me. And okay, I'm still a Christian because I didn't leave my religion because I, God showed me that, no, he does view women. He did create women and men as equal and they are equal in his sight and all. And so that was really, really where I got the, the you would say the, the knowledge that Apostle Paul was feminist or that rather God was a feminist. Okay, now the reason I decided to write the book was because, you know, when I got all this knowledge, I would go to some woman and be like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, Paul, he didn't mean it that way. He's not a misogynist. You know, he actually views women as, as equal to men. What you saw there, the translation, it doesn't really do justice to it, you know, and I'll go on and on. And a lot of women just, they didn't want to hear me. They're like, one lady was like, oh, please, Paul was a misogynist, okay? Just, I don't want to hear it and all. And um, another woman, well, she was like, no, what do you mean that he didn't say this? He said it. And, uh, you know, that's what it means. That's, that's it and all. And I just felt so disappointed, you know? And, you know, and to explain to them the knowledge I had, you know, they would have to take time to listen to me. And most people didn't because you heard Paul, they just knew, no, this guy is a misogynist. So I eventually decided, you know what, I'm going to write this book because um, I have a lot to say, but nobody wants to listen. So I'm going to put it into a book form so that if I ever have, um, if I ever need to tell someone that, no, Apostle Paul was a feminist or that, no, that's not what he meant. I can always just refer to my book. Like, you know, you can read my book. And all. So that is why I wrote Apostle Paul was a feminist volume one. Now the book doesn't touch on everything um, that I learned. That's why it's called volume one. Um, but it does touch on the book First Corinthians and all. So if you want to read the book, the links are in the description box. And if you like this video, if you like the story I just told, then like the video and uh, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time. Please subscribe, like and share and check out my channel.